Hi, I'm Andy and this is the fifth talk on Scheme. This is about quoting, uh, something which you basically can't do in a lot of languages and which is an incredibly powerful way of uh, building code, using code. So I'm going to uh, look at how you can make data in code. Then I'm going to look at how you can treat that data as if it were code. And then I'm going to take you through uh, uh, an extended example um, of a way you might do um, you might be able, you might write type safe code in a generic way uh, which is really just a way of seeing how quoting works and what it could be used for hopefully showing what a powerful mechanism it is um, how much we're missing out by not having it in other languages so let's start um, by just reviewing how you make data in code in Scheme. So here's some Scheme code. Um, we're running the list procedure. We're passing three arguments which are three strings. Um, and what, what you get out of that is a list of three things, uh, three, the three strings you put in. Uh, so you know this already. Uh, this is just how you make a piece of data. Not a very special piece of data, just data made out of strings. But what if we wanted to make a list not of three strings but of three symbols? Um, we could imagine we want to do this if we want to um, talk about code. If we're talking about code, we need symbols. Um, so when we try and do this, uh, it fails because A is not defined. So actually, that was trying to make a list of what A refers to and what B refers to and what C refers to. Um, but A doesn't refer to anything yet, nor do the others, um, because we haven't defined them. Um, so we can't do that. So how do we do what we were trying to do? which was to make a list of the symbols themselves, not what they refer to. Well, the answer is by quoting. And the way you quote things in Scheme is you put a single quote symbol before them. So notice that there's no end to the, um, the quotation. It's just the next thing after the single quote gets quoted. So this is how we quote those three symbols, A, B, and C, to make a list of the three symbols, A, B, and C. So when you type that into your uh, interactive Scheme interpreter, what it sends back to you is A, B, C. So that's a list of the three symbols, A, B, and C, not strings. OK, so um, let's look at what else we can do. Well, we can nest this stuff, uh, just the way code is nested, or, or a normal list could, could be nested. So here we're making a list of the symbol A, uh, followed by a list um, of B1 and B2, followed by C. Um, and when we ask the scheme interpreter to do that, what we get back is that nested list. Uh, so you can do that. Um, but um, uh, up till now, I've only shown you quoting uh, a single symbol, but actually quoting can apply to uh, anything you like, any one thing. So here we've got a single quote um, right at the beginning and then a whole great uh, expression uh, which looks like a bit of code that we're running, but because of that quote symbol there, it's not treated as a piece of code we're going to run, it's treated as uh, a bunch of lists. So actually, this second form that I've shown you is equivalent to the first one. And uh, now that I've shown you this, I can finally stop using that list function everywhere, because actually putting a single quote before um, a list of th uh, a, a bracketed list of things is just an easier way to do exactly the same thing. Notice here that um, that quote doesn't just apply to A and C. It also applies to everything in that middle list, uh, B1 and B2. So that what, that single quote covers everything um, in the next thing after it. So the, in this case, this, that's a bracketed list. Uh, but it also covers it all the way down inside. So by quoting, you get uh, you basically say to the interpreter, "Don't do anything with this stuff yet. Just uh, just hang on to it." Um, so just to try and clarify how this works. Um, maybe you can guess what the output of uh, just quote A would be. The answer is the interpreter doesn't uh, look up A or anything like that. It just stores the, the symbol A. But when we ask for A itself, well, the answer there is going to be that it's undefined. We haven't defined it. So we're able to quote something even though it's not yet defined. Uh, so let's take a little uh, sidestep before we carry on. Um, We've seen the empty list uh, before, and we've, we know that it has a name which is null. If we try and execute the empty list, which is what I'm doing at the top here, 
um, it fails because when you execute a bracketed list, you always have to have a, a, at least one thing in that list, uh, which is the name of the procedure you want to execute. So you can't execute the empty list. Um, you can create the empty list, and this is one way of doing it. So the list procedure takes in a list of stuff to go in that list. Um, if you don't supply any arguments, you get out the empty list. Um, but here is another way of doing the same thing. You, you put a quote and then the thing we had at the top. And what that means is, uh, don't execute this thing, just hang on to it. Um, and we can also, just to clarify what's going on here, um, we can ask what, uh, we'll ask the interpreter what null is, and null is exactly the same thing. So, quote, bracket, bracket, is the same thing as null. Null is just a name for um, a list with nothing in it, and quote, bracket, bracket, is another way of saying the same thing. Uh, but when we ask uh, the interpreter to quote the symbol null, then we get back the symbol null. And theoretically, we could have defined that to be something else later, um, in which case, when it's looked up, it wouldn't be. Bracket. Okay, so I've shown you some of the ways uh, we can make data, and especially we can make data that looks like code because it's got symbols in it. Uh, now let's talk about uh, how we can query data a bit because we haven't uh, covered all the stuff we're going to need uh, in this session. So let's define Z to be 1. So that's not a procedure we're defining, it's just a symbol. Define the symbol Z, <laughs> set its value to be 1. Uh, now we're going to ask. Um, we're going to use the symbol question mark function. Remember that um, functions that end with whose name ends with a question mark uh, generally uh, answer with true or false. They're, they're um, uh, Boolean uh, queries of some kind. So in this case, uh, what we're asking is, is quote Z a symbol? What do you think the answer is? The answer is hash t, which means true. So yes, when you quote z and then ask that thing that I've done, I've, I've made by quoting, is that a symbol? The answer is yes. But is z a symbol? At first glance, you might think yes. I mean, the way I phrase that question, it sounds like yes, but the answer is no. And the reason is, um, in Scheme, when you call a function, uh, before the function gets executed, all the arguments get evaluated. So in this case, z will be evaluated which means it will be replaced with that value 1, which we defined uh, it to be. And 1 is not a symbol, so we get back hash f, which means false. So, so the difference between quoting something and not quoting something is the evaluation of quote z is the symbol z. But the evaluation of z is 1. OK, so is quote z a number? Well, hopefully you've got enough uh, vocabulary now to be able to say no. Uh, hash f is false. Um, quote z is a symbol, it's not a number. Is z a number? Well, yes. We evaluate z, it comes out as 1. So yes, it is a number. Uh, OK, so uh, let's do some more stuff. Let's define a symbol called 42. And let's define that symbol to be quote, and then what looks like um, two things being multiplied. Multiplied. Star 6, 9 means multiply 6 by 9. Um, so we defined 42 to be that. So let's ask what 42 is. Any guesses? Well, 42 is a list of star, 6, and 9. That's what that quoting did. It made a list. And one, and one of the things in that list is the symbol star. Um, not the string star, by the way, but the symbol star. So let's uh, introduce a new function. It's called eval. This is a built-in function in Scheme. And what that does is takes a list, uh, which may include nested lists, and uh, executes it as if you typed it into the interpreter yourself, so as if you typed that bracket star 69 into the interpreter. So when I evaluate what 42, what the result of executing 42 is, I get back 6 times 9. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, this is this is going to be something that we could probably do a much better way in Scheme because Scheme has some really cool ways of doing stuff like this. Um, so to some extent you're going to have to um, bear with me here. I've chosen this example because it shows how powerful quoting is, not because it's the best way to implement uh, the answer to this problem. Although potentially it might be a way that you need in some contexts. So let's imagine for a second that you work in a bank. And one of the things about banks is that they're quite picky about numbers. Um, and let's imagine that um, you're working in a scheme, uh, which in itself is probably surprising, 
but um, they're very worried about the fact that you don't know what type variables are in Scheme. So uh, your your boss's boss is very um, uh, very much a kind of hands-on uh, interfering boss who ruins your life. Says to you, we can't use the plus function to add up numbers. It's not safe enough. We need something which checks the types of the arguments. We need a function which is called safe sum. So let's write him his safe sum function. So uh, at the top we've got the, the line which says that we're defining a function. So define and then a bracketed list uh, which tells us that the name of this function is safe sum. And it takes two arguments, x and y. And the body of the function is an if expression. Uh, so if both x and y are integers, can you read that now, uh, having gone through previous videos? So that's the AND function operating on two um, booleans. Is x an integer and is y an integer? So if x and y are both integers, using the built-in integer question mark function, which checks whether they're integers, um, if x and y are integers, we return the result of adding up x and y. Otherwise, that last line there is the else case. Uh, if x and y are not both integers, we return a string, which just says incorrect types. Uh, so it just kind of aborts. So um, you can see this function working down the bottom there. So when you run the safe sum function, pass in arguments one and two, you get back three. Uh, when you run the safe sum function with arguments which are not integers, you get back this panic string incorrect types. Okay, so imagine this scenario. That's all we're doing so far is just imagining this scenario, okay? Um, so now, let's uh, imagine that you're a contractor and actually you need to work in another bank next week and the other bank has a, an equally um, irritating boss who, who has a, uh, is very concerned that types are checked properly. Um, but let's also imagine that in this bank um, they are absolutely insistent that you should use floating point numbers for all your number calculations and never use integers. Um, so you've got a similar problem to the previous one, um, but one of the details is different. So what you would like to do is share code between the two problems. So let's start by solving this problem independently, um, not sharing code. So um, we're defining two functions now. The top function uh, is just a convenience function that I needed. Um, we're calling it non-int. It takes one argument, x, and it, it returns uh, the result of anding together um, if x is real and x is not an integer. So real is a built-in scheme function which means it's a real number. Integer you've seen. So um, this function returns true if this is a number type which is not an integer or a real number type which is not an integer. Um, so that should, um, if I've done that right, that should tell us that we're definitely using floating point number. Uh, let's, let's assume it does. It doesn't matter whether the, my function is rubbish or not. Um, and then secondly, we've got another function called safe sum, which is very similar to the one we saw before. Um, the only difference is instead of asking whether x and y are integers, we're asking whether they're non-integers, non-int, calling that function above. So now you can see when you do safe sum of, of one and then uh, one and two, you get back incorrect types. Um, and if you do safe sum of 1.1 and 2.4, which are floating point numbers, it gives you back the answer. So uh, this safe sum function does what we need to do in this bank. Okay, we need a little bit more machinery, so keep on bearing with me, okay? But this is quite a nice little function to look at anyway. Let's define a function called replace, which takes in a list, takes in something to find, and something to replace it with. So list is the list, find is the thing you should find, and ripple is the thing you should replace it with. Um, so basically the idea of this function is to go through any list or, and, and also anything nested inside that list and every time it finds something that's equal to find it replaces it with REPL. So let's look at the body of this function. Um, it's a big if expression um, and it, the if is on whether list is a pair or not. So all, all lists are pairs, they're a pair of the front thing and the rest of the stuff. So every time you get a list passed into this replace function, um, we are going to get into that first part of the if, which is that big cons expression, that, those three lines. Um, if it's not a list, we're going to get into that if expression lower down. 
So let's do the if first because that feels nicer to me. So um, if this thing is not a list, this list thing is not a list, then we check whether we do an if and we say if um, l l the, this list thing is the same as find. So the equal function says, is it the same as that? Um, if it is the same as it, we return REPL, otherwise we return list, which is the, the thing that was passed in. So this that little bit of function just says, um, if I was passed in find, return REPL, otherwise return what I was passed in. So that's if it's not a pair, which means it's not a list. Uh, if it is a pair, then we const together the result of running this function on the first thing in the list and running this function on the rest of the list and passing in the other two arguments the same as we had before find and REPL. So what that means is recurse into the front of the list which may be a list itself or maybe some number or symbol um, and then recurse into the rest of the list which we can be fairly sure is a list although it may actually be empty. Um, Incidentally, if it's the empty list, it is not a pair, so we get into the second part of the if. Okay, so let's watch this function working. This is all just machinery, but uh, hopefully all this motivation will eventually um, show you what, uh, how useful and amazing quoting is. Okay, so let's call replace. Let's pass in a list of uh, one, two, three, and let's pass in uh, two as the thing that we're replacing. And what we're going to replace it with is the string xxx. Well, when you do that, you get one xxx three. Okay, so replace two by xxx in the list. One two three. You get one xxx three. Makes sense. Um, and then let's do it with a nested thing just to make it clear that that works. So if we've got a list with a nested list of b one and b two inside it, and we say replace b one by boo, um, then you do indeed replace b one by boo, even though it's inside a nested list. So my function, my replace function works. Okay, so we're nearly there. So let's define a symbol, not a function, but a symbol called generic safe sum. So it's like safe sum, but it's in some sense generic, and you'll see how in a minute. So the symbol generic safe sum um, is uh, is going to be defined to be this whole great big quoted expression. So see the quote there on the second line. That means uh, quote everything that comes after it because it's before that bracket, and that bracket doesn't end until right near the end. So quote this stuff that looks like code, and the code looks a lot like the safe sum that we saw before, except in place of that integer question mark or non-int question mark function that we had before, we've just got, in all caps, TEST. So this is a thing that, uh, it, this is a list. Once you put that quote symbol there, it means it's a list, and it's got a bunch of nested lists inside it. Uh, but it looks a lot like code. It, it's a list that contains various symbols like define, safe sum, x test. Okay, so uh, there's a bit of generic code if we can uh, if we can transform it somehow. So let's ask what generic safe sum is. Uh, it's exactly what you saw on the previous page. Now let's define something called safe sum q, which is the result of replacing in generic safe sum the symbol test with the symbol integer question mark. So Let's ask what safe sum q is. Well, does that look familiar to you? Perhaps I should move myself out of the way. I'm sure you can under you can understand what uh, what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, it, th so that safe sum looks an awful lot like the safe sum that we saw before, right? So let's evaluate safe sum q. So let me just yeah, let me just explain that. So safe sum q is a, is a list of code stuff. So this is not a function. When you evaluate it, you get back a list. So you can see there a list. Um, so you don't get back a procedure. You get back a list of stuff, code-like stuff. So in order to use it we need to run the eval function. When we evaluate safe sum q, um, we define a function called safe sum. So if we go back again, um, in, the, in, the very, in the bottom stuff there, 
um, the define that we that is in this list defines a function called safe sum. So when we eval safe sum q, a function is defined whose name is safe sum. So now we can add up one and two using safe sum and get back three, and we can add up floating points and we get back uh, objections. Um, and you can also do exactly the same thing if um, in the middle of the screen here, instead of you know, substituting in integer question mark, um, you'd substituted in non-int question mark, then the safe sum that would have been defined when you evaluated safe sum q uh, would have been the type that rejects integers and accepts floating points. I haven't shown you that, I'm showing you the same example again. So um, what we've done there is using purely features of the language, purely quoting and uh, moving through lists and stuff like that, not stepping outside of the language at all, we've written a function which is parameterized, uh, which is generic, um, without any special generics uh, feature like you've got in Java, or a template feature like you've got in C++, not even a macro feature like you've got in C. Um, you've got all that uh, generic behavior even where you've got where you really do need to substitute something into something else um, uh, obviously uh, often in scheme you can write generic code which doesn't uh, require any quoting even you can just write uh, uh, a function which takes in a function as its argument and uh, it's just a standard argument but where you need to write code where um, something about that code is parameterized uh, quoting is your friend and this is something uh, that's just not available uh, in other languages and it's just a beautiful thing. Um, why don't we have it elsewhere? That's it for today.